Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, January 10th. We want to say Happy New Year and welcome back. And thanks for joining us for today's assessment lunch and learn office hour with the Maine DOE assessment team. Just a couple of housekeeping reminders at the beginning. Please go ahead and post any questions you have in the chat box. If we can't answer them within the chat during the session, we will certainly try our best to address them at the end of the information being presented. And we'll go ahead and dive right in. So today we're gonna to be talking about Maine three year and Maine science. We've got some updates around NAEP um, 2024. We have some updates around access as well as around our alternate assessment, the MSAA. For those of you who I may not know or haven't met yet, my name is Jody Bossio-Smith and I'm currently serving as the Director of Assessment here at Maine DOE. I'm joined by my colleagues, Krista Averill, Coordinator for the General Assessments, Dr. Regina Lewis, Coordinator for National and International Assessments, as well as our Office Specialist, Kalua Wilson. Here we have the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders, and providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. And as a reminder, before we dive into updates around the Maine three-year assessment in reading and mathematics, SAUs can request technical assistance around the Maine educational assessments we have a link in the form, a link to the form here. Um, and I did share, I did send out these slides to you before the session began this morning to all of our registered participants. You can complete the SAU request form for technical assistance. You can also feel free to email any one of us. Our email addresses and phone numbers are available via our main DOE assessment webpage. And here, just a reminder about our annual calendar for state assessments and national assessments this year. Chris, am I handing this off to you? Yes, you are. So we've been receiving an increased number of data requests for data from across our assessments. So just um, some overview information for you. Suppressed data from 2017-18 to 2021-22 are currently available in the ASA dashboard. Our data team is working diligently to get you your 22-23 data. In addition, legacy data, so that would be suppressed data for years prior to those available in the ESSA dashboard, is available through that link in the slides, and I also just posted the link to the slides in the chat for you. And then if you're looking to access unsuppressed data from those years, there is a submit a data request link at the bottom of the data warehouse page. And then in addition, SAUs currently independently have access to your spring 23 main science assessment data in the Kite reporting platform, platform your spring 23, fall 23, and if you've already assessed your winter 24, main through year assessment data in the Acacia platform, as well as your spring 23 WIDA access data in WIDA AMS. So jumping into the main through year assessment. So the assessment team is releasing a main through year assessment climate survey. The intended audience is SAU and school leadership in various roles, educators, and any others that deal with Maine through your assessment data as appropriate. I will share the form with you in just a moment so you can get an overview of what it looks like. But overall, the topic is, did your students' scores on the Maine through your assessment meet your expectations based on the student's performance in the classroom? And our request is that you share this with your entire SAU school community, your teachers, your administrators, all of those individuals, um, because we're really looking for feedback on these items from a large audience. So I'm going to share my screen here for just a moment. I'll give you an idea of what this looks like so you know what you're getting um, from the beginning. 
So it is going to ask the individual to share all of the roles they have. So I did want to show you this just to emphasize that this really is for all of these individuals throughout your SAU that we do want to get that feedback if they are working with Maine through your assessment data. We're really looking for a broad scope here. So please, please share this. I'm just going to choose a random field. It is going to ask about RIT scores for spring 23, whether or not your student scores aligned with your expectations based on your students' performance in the classroom, as well as spring scores for fall 23. These are required, so let me just really quickly click. We do ask you share it with all of your math and reading teachers. If a teacher didn't have experience with math growth and maybe they don't have expectations for RIT scores, there is an option either that they don't have context for that comparison. That's fine. That's still incredibly helpful information for us to know. And then it's a short survey. It's only four questions. So the last one switches to asking about the main specific scale score. And Kalua, I'm actually going to need you as soon as possible to change that to main specific scale score. That's likely my fault. So I apologize to the field. We will get that fixed immediately. Um, but if the main specific scale score and achievement level classification of well below, below, at, and above state expectations matches what you had expected to see for your students. Once you've done that, please submit. And that's all we need for that. So we're going to update um, the title of that question, but it is ready to go. And the answer choices do say main specific scale score. So we'll make sure that that's updated. We wanted to get that out to you to give you ample time to look at it. So I'll stop sharing, Jody. And if you want to take back over screen sharing, and I can share the rest of the information. All right. Here it is. And Keith, I did see your comment in the chat around sharing the entire PowerPoint again. That's a great idea. And I will do that after the session. Thank you. If you'd like to go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So also, as you know, the fall administration wrapped up in November and we took that data and calculated the state RIT averages for each grade level and content area. Um, so they are here on this slide for you. And you can also see from the 2020 map growth norms what the national average RIT, RIT is in the fall for that grade level and content area. So all of these values fall within the standard error of measurement, which is plus or minus three RIT score points, which would tell us that Maine's results during the fall administration were consistent with the students' results we would expect from the 2020 norms. So that information had been requested. I just wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to look at that. And if you wanted to um, have the opportunity to compare your school's or SAU's performance to the Maine average RIT. Next slide, please. We are also in our optional winter administration, which started on January 2nd and runs through February 16th. We are not holding a synchronous virtual assessment coordinator training for this optional winter administration, but we will hold one again in the spring for the required administration. NWEA, however, has still developed training slides um, for reference for individuals who are seeking that information. Those slides are not only linked in our slides here, they're also on our website, as well as the NWEA main connections page. So two common questions that we've been receiving for the optional winter administration. The first one is simply, does my SAU or school have to administer main through year assessment through Acacia or can we administer map growth? So the main through year assessment would be through the Acacia platform. But if your district has made the decision to independently purchase the map growth assessment, then we do not have a policy regarding which one you choose to administer in the winter. But I do want to note map growth is no longer part of the state assessment program. And so this would only be possible if your district made the decision to independently purchase map growth. Uh, there are two considerations when making this decision one that would support choosing through year and one that currently supports choosing map growth. So the first one is just to keep in mind that the diagnostic portion of the spring through year assessment will start at the ability level of the student's last through year assessment administration. 
So in this case, if you give map growth in the winter, your student's diagnostic portion in the spring would actually go back to that fall RIT score. Um, so just keep that in mind. The other consideration, on the other hand, is that map growth reports will be available within 24 hours only for those administering map growth at this time. Um, if you're taking the main through year assessment this winter, those map growth reports will be available after the close of the administration window, which is 7 p.m. On, on February 16th. Um, at this time, NWEA is working on an enhancement that allows for the more immediate delivery of map growth reports, but it is not yet ready. Uh, they do expect to have it ready by spring, but we know for sure that it's not ready right now. Next slide, please. And the other common question is, as people are going into Acacia and looking at accommodations, supports, and groups that they entered in fall 23, they're not seeing them for winter 23. So at this time, the Acacia platform requires that accommodations and supports are assigned specifically to an assessment administration. When you go into Acacia and you click that accessibility supports tab, before you can enter in any accommodations or supports, it requires that you choose an assessment administration window. Similarly, the manage online testing groups and reporting groups are created by administration rather than the academic year. I did reach out to NWEA, however, and they did indicate that they're currently working on expanding group assignments to apply across administrations um, so that there's not a necessity to go in and redo that. Oop. Next slide, please. All right, and if you have issues or problems or concerns, whom do you contact? So if it's a technical issue, a technical issue with Acacia platform, a technical issue with the state solutions secure browser, technical issue with MARC, which is the map growth platform, which would include rostering and MARC, all of that is for NWEA main partner support. And I would, there's the two contact options there, um, email and phone. I typically use phone if I have a question for them, but email works just as well. I do wanna just highlight for a moment that Maine DOE has no access to student rosters or reports in the map growth platform. So although we've requested that access at this time, we do not have it for various reasons. And so unfortunately I can't check your map growth rosters to make sure they're correct or any of that. I have no access to any of that information at this time. And so if there is an issue with rostering in the map growth platform, NWEA main partner support is the resource that you'll need to go to. The last thing that main partner support at NWEA is here to help you with is your SAU data cleanup tasks, which are after the close of the administration window. Main DOE's Medems help desk is here specifically for re issues related to NEO and Synergy. They cannot help you with Acacia. So if you have a student who appears or does not appear in your assessment roster in NEO and you think it's wrong, Medem's Help Desk is the place to go. If you're not sure whether a student should be eligible based on the information that your SAU has entered into Synergy, Medem's Help Desk is the place to go. I am here for everything else. So questions related to assessment content, accessibility, scoring, reporting, policy, fixing students who are in your NEO roster but not in Acacia, you'll want to email them to me and CC Kalua, And then any other problems that NWEA main partner support or Medem's help desk are not able to resolve. So if you go to them and they say, you need to come back to main DOE, which they shouldn't if you stick to those topics, but if they do come back to me and we'll take care of it. Next slide, please. NWEA is also offering professional learning sessions for your individual school or SAU. So you would get to choose the time, the date, and uh, your topic, and NWEA would work with you to have that set up. Um, so there is a request form and the list of available sessions is there. Our statewide NWEA PL programming resumes in March. So at this time, we do have still available a bank of open slots that we haven't taken as the DOE for our spring programming, which means there's still the opportunity for your school or SAU to request PL directly with NWEA. Um, when all of those slots fill up, I'll let you know and we'll disable that form. But right now there's still quite a few. Next slide, please. The assessment team is also hosting our own virtual workshop 
which is about understanding scores from the mean through your assessment, specifically looking at RIT scores and mean specific scale scores to really look at the differences and similarities between the two and their purpose and value and how that is different. Um, just as an example, some things that would be looked at that have come up in questions are things like, what if two students have the same as main specific scale score, but different RIT scores? How do I interpret that? Or the same RIT scores, but different main specific scale scores? Those kind of questions that may not be immediately intuitive will really look into what they mean because of those similarities and differences in scores. We'd love to have you. Um, so if you're not available on the 11th, February 8th, would be prime time for that. Next slide, please. Shifting gears to the main science assessment. This slide is just a reminder that your spring 23 reports became available on November 6th to district assessment coordinators. If you didn't see that email until now, the link to set up your account expired after 20 days. And so you'd want to reach out to the kite service desk, whether that's by email, phone, or chat. And those options are listed there. We also linked for you the reporting platform guide and the score interpretation guide, um, just to aid you in some of the navigation of that platform. Next slide, please. And I believe this is last for me. So just saving the date for our spring 2024 trainings, and you can sign up now through the registration links. They're all on Thursdays. So March 28th at three will be the lockdown browser installation. April 4th at three, we'll be rostering an atom and accessibility. And then administration proctoring and a recap of accessibility will be on April 25th. If Thursdays are not a good day for you, all of these are being recorded by our assessment vendor. And that recording will be posted on the main science support page. And I believe at this point, turn it over to Dr. Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, things are getting down to the wire with NAEP. The administration window opens on January 29th. Uh, one thing I'm seeing this year is a lot of overwhelmed staff trying to complete the tasks and and uh, with the new platform, it's just, it's taking longer because we are we all have that learning curve. So your if you check with your uh, principals and school coordinators of the NAEP selected schools, please make sure they've scheduled their assessment planning meetings. Uh, some schools need to have two meetings, a, a person handling the Wi-Fi access for when we come into the school to administer the assessment needs also to meet with our assessment team lead as as well as the school coordinator and the school coordinator and the um, assessment team lead will uh, go over like the student accommodations and any non-participating students. So that should, all that information should be uh, entered into the platform in advance. I have heard of some problems um, with entering that and some disappearing schools on the district, at the district level. Uh, NAEP's working really hard to to fix that. So contact me and contact the help desk and we'll get we'll get things fixed. All right. Uh, right. So as I mentioned right now, we're the we're asking that the student information and assessment logistics be provided. And it says December, but we're past that. So I I missed that. I'm sorry about that. Um, the parent um, and guardian notifications need to go out in advance of the assessment at least one week prior to the assessment date. So, and the translations, if people need translations other than English and Spanish, those are available on our assessment team website and a quick email and I can send those to you in PDF or provide the link. Next slide, please. So the January tasks, they're very similar to what um to the december tasks um but we just make sure that we're properly coding non-participants and um another highlight is to make sure that the, you've read the uh, inclusion and accommodation policies for nape i'm having a lot of requests for um text to speech in mathematics which is allowable for nape and it's a universal design element and if the, uh, the documentation is available in the platform. I can send you copies if you need them. Um, and then that scheduling that meet, meeting with the NAEP representative. And I can't say that enough because as of the, today, only 68% of those had been scheduled out of the out of the 
200 plus schools that we have taking the NAEP this year in Maine. Next slide, please. So our on-site um, tech coordinator, the, um, just a reminder, that person needs to be there when the NAEP team comes in to help the, us access the school Wi-Fi. Um, that's why we have a, a the meeting scheduled with the NAEP representative, as well as um, a couple of extra uh, Wi-Fi um, tests that need to take place and some safe listing of the URLs so that NAEP can actually be administered. Okay. And so the next slide, please. So a little reminder about inclusion. We want every student that can possibly access the NAEP to participate. Those exceptions are uh, the students that um, take, participate in the alternate as assessment. Or if if there are a few other reasons and if the if you come up to that, you need another something as far as exclude for another reason, please contact me and we can discuss it because there are reasons that um NAEP will accept and some students just um you know can't participate in the assessment and that's the, there are reasons and would we'll, we'll discuss those privately. All right. And uh, the next slide, please. Oh, can you flip back for a minute, please? And just, the reminder there at the bottom is um, there there aren't opt out for NAEP or any assessment in the in you know any state assessments as well. Um, there's only exclusions and parent refusals are the re reasons why students can't participate. All right, and that's right. So when it, um, don't reach out and ask for an opt out. Tell me why the student can't participate. All right, go ahead and advance. Thank you. Um, the end. All right. So I see a question about the text to speech overall test. And no, it's, it's math and science. Um, we can have directions read, read for reading, but it, we cannot, um, you know, not, uh, read the reading passages. That's so it's unlike the, um, this state assessment. All right, and inclusion for the multilingual learners, the, um, it, again, all students who can access the assessment should be assessed. Uh, only those who have been enrolled in U.S. schools for less than one full academic year, right, before the NAEP, NAEP assessment and cannot access the NAEP uh, may be excluded. Uh, and we just, and any formerly EL students cannot receive accommodations. Next slide, please. Right, so for troubleshooting, like I said, if an accommodation is not listed, re review the policies and reach out. Um, the um, the NAEP representatives may be, you know, maybe a little confused. If you need a clarification, they can reach out. I and you can reach out to me too. Um, again, like the text to speech. And let's see. Um, when oh, oh, one other thing is. When you have a problem with the accommodations, I can't see the student names, please refer to line number and please do not include any student names or um, SSIDs in, for, for NAEP's weird about that. They, NAEP considers an SSID uh, PII, or, you know, it, which is odd to me, but that's what I was told. Um, so just let give me the line number and you know, and I can take a look at that. I can't walk the staff through the steps yet. Um, the platform development doesn't or permissions don't allow us to. We've requested that, and that's but the um neighbor representative that will be administering the assessment in the school can see everything, and we are using those people as a great resource. So, and the help desk information for NAEP is at the bottom of the slide. Okay, next slide, please. And there you go, Jody. And turning it over to me. So access and alternate access are Maine's general and alternate assessment of English language proficiency. The window opened this past Monday on January 8th and remains open through March 3rd, 2024. As a reminder, the access roster for each SAU is created based on the synergy enrollment. 
And the reason that this is important as a reminder is because I'm receiving some emails from SAUs wondering why students are not in WIDA AMS, which is the platform. If a student isn't in WIDA AMS, who you expect to see in WIDA AMS, nine times out of 10, the reason is because that student does not have an ML start date in their Synergy enrollment record. If they don't have an ML start date in Synergy, they would not be on the access assessment roster in NEO, and therefore they wouldn't be in WIDA AMS. So just a reminder that this is a really important kind of administrative task um, to ensure that the accurate students are included in the platform. So there is a daily change file, which is processed by main DOE. And the reason for this is to capture enrollment updates, such as new transfer students, um, and to enter them into WIDA AMS. We also frequently have updates to student demographic information, such as the spelling of names. Sometimes what happens is a test administrator will go into WIDA AMS and realize a student's name is misspelled because perhaps it's misspelled in Synergy. So the daily change file does run. However, it's important to note that there is no functionality in WIDA AMS to remove or delete students. So for example, if Regina's name was misspelled in the assessment platform, and then the SAU went and corrected that in Synergy, she would be added into the assessment platform again with the correct spelling of her name. So SAUs do not need to take action in the event that there is a duplicate record because there's been an update to a student account. Um, those students would not be counted as non-participants. The duplicates are something that would be cleaned up by main DOE during the data validation process, which is post-administration of the assessment. And as a reminder, there are there is confusion around who to contact when it comes to the access assessments, and that's because they're sort of two separate but linked organizations. So for questions around assessment training, the modules for the e-learning, which is free to all main educators that would like an account, you would contact the WIDA Client Services Center. So that's the first number and the first email address here on the slide. For questions around WIDA AMS, um, technical issues with the platform, questions about installation of the DRC lockdown browser, that's when you would contact Data Recognition Corporation, more commonly known as DRC. And you can see that contact information here in the middle. And then again, with questions related to the coordination of the assessment, the materials received, anything around assessment of multilingual learners from a policy standpoint, or if you're looking for information about statute, please feel free to reach out directly to me um, or in the event that you've asked a question of the Client Services Center or DRC and they're unable to help you. Just as Krista mentioned, I'm also always available. And we're starting our pre-administration work for Maine's alternate assessments based on alternate academic achievement standards, the MSAA. So the MSAA will open on March 11th, and it's open through April 26th this year. At the beginning of last week, a survey was, spent, was sent to special education directors on one, one, two, on January 2nd, um, because frequently the folks who are doing the MSAA coordination are different than those who may be the general district assessment coordinator. So we did send that survey out to directors. I'm also going to include a link to that survey in my follow-up email to the participants today in the event that you are a DAC who would also like access to the MSAA platform. So you can complete that if you would like district level access for our alternate assessment platform. Our test administration manual and user guides for test coordinators and test administrators are now available on our main DOE MSAA webpage. Also posted as an updated alternate assessment timeline for the field. That was a resource that 
has been forthcoming and we had gotten some emails for an updated resource. So that is now available. And of course, as always with any questions around alternate assessments, please feel free to reach out directly to me. So that concludes our content for today. So we can go ahead and transition to questions and answers and I'll stop sharing my screen. Very good, Jody. Okay, well, we have a question for Krista. Is there science data similar to the state writ average data you just shared with us? So the science averages would be visible on your SAU reports that are available in the Kite platform, but I can certainly um, aggregate that information into one location. Okay, the next question was about NEEP, and it was refer Teresa was referring to how do principals and school coordinators sign up for the pl assessment planning meetings? I'm just, I think that's what you're referring to. And that's within the assessment management system for NAEP. There should be a tile that says your assess or a schedule assessment planning meeting. And ne next to that, there should be a calendar with a, a link. Some of those were some people are experiencing a technical difficulty and it's grayed out and they're unable to schedule. If that's the case, please reach out and I will get the you know, in contact with the NAEP representative. She'll schedule directly with, with this um, principal or school coordinator and I will notify a systems development that it needs to be fixed. Then we have, um, I wanna make note that the, Krista did place that link for the assessment climate survey in in the chat, and we've already no, uh, addressed that the text to speech is universal for math only. So I will have to find out which NAEP rep <laughs> provided incorrect information, but there is it is correct in the documentation, and I can send you copies if you need to. So reach out, and let's see am I screen just refreshed on me and I lost our, where I was in the questions. I apologize to all of you. All right. I do have, Kathy, I do have um, translations for NAEP. They're on my our website and I can grab those, uh, that site where they're located. It's also in the um, Q&A doc, but I will provide those links in the chat in the, momentarily. And let's see, jo Jody, there's a question about not seeing all the schools in the WIDA AMS. Not seeing all of all the schools in the SAU? Not seeing all the students, excuse me, I misread that. Yes, Teresa, please have them reach out to me directly um, and we'll I'll work with your data specialist to determine why that happened. Thank you. It, 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 we're have we're we are seeing kind of a a pattern that's happening right now where the ML start date was perhaps entered in the local enrollment system, but somehow did not get uploaded to Synergy. Um, so sometimes it's as easy as that to fix, okay. and I think that happens because it you know it's it's either just a forgotten step or you know everyone has a million things going on. So have them reach out to me. Um, with the SSID numbers of the students, and I'll I'll make sure to get back to them today. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Okay. Have, I'm sorry, I, I was just going to say, Gina, we have a question from Mark as well. I don't know if you, it's further up. If a student takes the access assessment under the account with the incorrect spelled name, will the scores be shifted to the correct spelling during the data cleanup? Oh, so that... <laughs> That's a tricky one. So the short answer, Mark, is yes. So basically, during data validation, we are looking to resolve those discrepancies, and, and we're going to be looking at enrollment data um, to do so. So for example, if Krista took the assessment under Kristen, and then uh, we, we got back two records. So one's a blank record for Krista, 
and one's um, completed test sessions for Kristen, we would update the name of um, we would update the name of the record with the completed test sessions to reflect what we have in our state enrollment. So that's kind of a long answer. I know I said it was a short answer, but basically we're we're looking to resolve discrepancies so that we are attributing the accurate test sessions to the students. Um, and that we have the accurate student demographic data based on synergy. Okay, team, did I miss any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions in the chat. Is there anyone that would like to raise their hand or ask a question? If there's no further questions, I just want to thank everyone for making the time to join us today. And I know many of you may have also been in SAUs that had delayed openings, which ends up leaving everyone scrambling and running around for the rest of the day trying to get caught up. Um, so thank you for your time. And as always, with any questions and any feedback, please reach out to a member of the team. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and kudos to Dawn, who had no school today. <laughs>